sanctuary and at home. It's a pleasure to, to welcome you back. And we hope as we move toward Easter that the pews will continue to fill up. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in the Decalogue. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Since we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help. In time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join with me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from the ways of the lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against the idol of the laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises to play your way unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all of your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, 
Our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As many of you know, Paul is doing a sermon series on, from the book of Daniel uh, during Lent. And so the first lessons are from the book of Daniel. This is today, it's Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, and then verses 10 to 18. And I'm reading from the New Century Version. During Nebuchadnezzar's second year as king, he had dreams that bothered him and kept him awake at night. So the king called for his fortune tellers, magicians, wizards, and wise men, because he wanted them to tell him what he had dreamed. They came in and stood in front of the king. Then the king said to them, I had a dream that bothers me, and I want to know what it means. The wise men answered the king, saying, no one on the earth can do what the king asks. No great and powerful king has ever asked the fortune tellers, magicians, or wise men to do this. The king is asking something that is too hard. Only the gods could tell the king this, but the gods do not live among the people. When the king heard their answer, he became very angry. He ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be killed. So King Nebuchadnezzar's order to kill the wise men was announced, and when and men went, uh, men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to kill them. Ariok, the commander of the king's guards, was going to kill the wise men of Babylon. But Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and skill, saying, "Why did the king order such a terrible punishment?" Then Ariok explained everything to Daniel. So Daniel went to King Nebuchadnezzar and asked for an appointment so that he could tell the king what his dream meant. Then Daniel went to his house and explained the whole story to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel asked his friends to pray that the God of heaven would show them mercy and help them understand this secret. So he and his friends would not be killed with the other wise men of Babylon. This is the word of the Lord. This morning's psalm is a portion of Psalm 51. You will likely remember this psalm from our Ash Wednesday services. Let's read together in unison, starting at chapter 11. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O God, of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is from the book of Hebrews. And in it, there is introduced the name of Melchizedek. So as I was preparing for the readings today, I scratched my head and said, well, who is Melchizedek? So here's a bit of uh, illumination from uh, Melchizedek, which will hopefully put uh, the reading from Hebrews in a bit more context. Melchizedek was both a king and a priest in ancient times before Aaron. Not just a king, and not just a priest, but both. 
But he's it is foundational for understanding how Jesus occupies the dual offices of king and priest. In Hebrew, the name Melchizedek literally means king of righteousness. And he ruled over the city of Salem, which translated from the Hebrew means shalom or harmonious peace. In the three verses that describe his life and ministry in Genesis chapter 14, we're introduced to Melchizedek's authority as king of Salem and priest of the God most high. He speaks of God as both creator and deliverer. He even offers bread and wine to Abram, to Abram after his victory in battle over his enemies. In response, Abram ties to Melchizedek a tenth of everything, reinforcing the latter's spiritual significance. The gospel allusion to the sacrament of communion shouldn't go unnoticed. Today's reading from Hebrews includes a passage from Psalm 110. Were I to read it all, that psalm would help us appreciate Christ's role as king and priest. The psalm declares that this future king will be given a greater honor, power, and authority than any human king before or after him. He sits at Yahweh's right hand, the place of highest honor as Yahweh's vice regent and representative. But this messianic figure isn't only a king, he's also a priest in the order of Melchizedek, as in Psalm 110, verse 4. He performs priestly functions, such as offering gifts and sacrifices for himself and others, making intercessions for all, leading worship, and guiding in corporate prayer. And he sits at the right hand of God, so he is a high priest a priest in the spiritual or heavenly realm, higher than other human priests. So Jesus is the fulfillment of Melchizedek, that of a righteous king who conquered sin and death and who brought harmonious peace or shalom to his kingdom. Jesus reigns not just for four-year terms, but forever. Now, here's the reading, second lesson from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Every high priest is chosen from among, among other people. He is given the work of going before God for them to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Since he himself is weak, he is able to be gentle with those who do not understand and who are doing wrong things. Because he is weak, the high priest must offer sacrifices for his own sins and also for the sins of the people. To be a high priest is an honor, but no one chooses himself for this work. He must be called by God as Aaron was. So also Christ did not choose himself to have the honor of being a high priest, but God chose him. God said to him from Psalm 2-7, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And from Psalm 110, verse 4, you are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek. While Jesus lived on earth, he prayed to God and asked God for help. He prayed with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And his prayer was heard because he trusted God. Even though Jesus was the Son of God, he learned obedience by what he suffered. And because his obedience was perfect, he was able to give eternal salvation to all who obey him. In this way, God made Jesus a high priest, just like Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. I'm reading from John chapter 12, starting at verse 20. Just before I do that, it is such a pleasure to hear responses. And uh, as Dar sings a little bit in the liturgy, soon we'll be doing that as well. It just, uh, just fills the sanctuary. It's wonderful. This is a, a, a story from Jesus when he talks about the need for the Son of God to die, but also the fact that this ultimately is good for his people. Now, there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast, and these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came to tell, tell Jesus, and Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor me. Now my soul has become troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. And others were saying an angel has spoken to them. Jesus answered and said, this voice has not come for my sake, but for your sake. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. The gospel of the Lord. Potentially be a great sermon. Dick is going to expand on some news that we had in the adventures. And before I get into that, I just want to reinforce what a blessing it is to have that dear lady singing and playing with us. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> So I wanted to uh, tell you this morning what I put into the adventures. Father Van Randall has chosen not to come to Advent and be our rector and shepherd. Linda and I visited the he and Rebecca and um, Poppy um, about a week or so ago. Uh, I felt like it was time for us to meet face to face and talk eyeball to eyeball uh, about his future and the future of Advent uh, with him. Um, he and Rebecca did a lot of praying, uh, considering uh, the opportunities at Advent, the challenges at Advent, um, the uh, need for them to relocate to Northeast Ohio, uh, and the opportunity to revision uh, Advent uh, as a new church family. Um, one of the key issues, uh, as you may remember from our uh, annual meeting, we voted on a budget for 2021 that included the assumption that Father Ben would be with us for seven months from June through December. Uh, and that resulted in a significant um, loss for 
uh, the church during that period. Uh, and that um, that loss, that financial impact weighed heavily on, on the decision. So <clears throat> Ray and I, Paul, um, the vestry have labored long and hard about this decision. Uh, we felt like there was a real moral responsibility uh, that we had for calling Father Ben, uh, coming to this place with the uh, financial challenges that uh, we face. Um, we have a cash reserve uh, that has been built up over the last four years. It was sustained us um, through the end of 2022 with his salary and benefits, um, but he's chosen not to come in. While that's disappointing to all of us, I know, um, certainly I believe it's the right decision for Father Ben and his family and the right decision for him. Uh, as I've mentioned oftentimes during this process, I felt like the Holy Spirit has been at play and overseeing and covering this whole process. Uh, this outcome of Father Ben's decision is not what I, the human, hoped for and expected. Yet I believe the Holy Spirit is in charge and in control and I believe that there is something else for us, a new season for Advent, uh, and we await the Lord's direction and timing for what that is. Um, as we'll read a bit later in our prayer, um, this, this prayer that we've used for uh, quite a number of months now uh, was written actually by John Crothel. And so let me read the last line of that prayer, open us to what you have for our future as a new church family in Christ. We pray that there will be new doors open to us. We await what the Lord has in mind for us. So that, of course, is a disappointing news. I really did not expect that we turned down. And so for the short-term, immediate future, I am your rector light. Which is a disappointment for all, especially since I can't sing like God. <laughs> so this morning, what I want to do is talk about this is serious, but how does a Christian respond to a really daunting challenge when Dick says that the finances with the size of the ministry aren't quite there to sustain a, a full-time rector at this point? but yet understanding God has a purpose for Advent. And so I want to speak to you out of the book of Daniel. Uh, and in the message, here's how verses 10 and 11 are translated. I love this. This is when it's discovered that the king has a dream and he's going to kill everyone if they can't find an answer for it. Nobody can do what you ask. That's said to the king. What you're asking is impossible. And where Advent is right now, thinking about uh, Father Ben and his decline of, of the call, what do we do now? It feels daunting. It feels almost impossible. But think of Daniel. He was about 17 years old when he was faced with an impossible assignment. What do you do when you're facing a major challenge? Uh, it wasn't just for him and his friends. All of the uh, so-called wise people in Babylon were going to be killed if the, the king's uh, dream wasn't, wasn't answered. And here's the thing. When you think about where we're going as a ministry, we don't have the ability, we don't have the wisdom to meet the need, the desire of what, we just, of what we want. But Daniel took three steps I want to share with you that I believe can be helpful when you face a major challenge, a crossroad in your life. And the first one is, don't panic and don't fear. Daniel had a legitimate reason to be worried. In verse 14, it says, Then Daniel replied with discretion and discernment to Ariad, the captain of the king's bodyguard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. I had brought this up before in a Zoom meeting, but if you remember at Christmas, wise men came from the east. Wise men, like the people in Babylon, searching for Christ. And all of those were to be killed now if the answer to the dream wasn't found. 
the most powerful person on the planet had decided to kill Daniel and his friends and the rest of the astrologers and other wise people. And uh, Daniel didn't panic. He wasn't fearful. And, and as a ministry, Advent is facing a, a disappointing situation. And I'm suggesting that, that we can really learn from Daniel in how to respond in a redemptive, positive way when something like this happens. What I'm sharing will work not just for we're dealing with the, uh, the next step in finding leadership for the church, but also in other areas of your life. When you come up against a crisis, don't panic, don't be fearful. One of the things that I have mentioned on Zoom in the recent past is that my, my daughter-in-law is facing cancer. She had a, a tumor in her breast, and this past Monday, she had a mastectomy, and uh, the tissue was sent the pathology to see if any next steps need to be followed. And she had seen uh, three specialists. She had gone to a, 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 natural, a natural doctor, that's not the right word, a doctor who practices alternative medicine. And uh, Chris and her had prayed and it felt like they were to follow the advice of their surgeon, have a procedure and then follow up, believing that uh, there was no other involvement in the body. And this was the best step. Didn't panic, didn't fear, and took an aggressive step. So that's the first one. Then the second step is listen first and discover the facts. My natural tendency when there's an unexpected crisis is to react rather than to, uh, to listen to all the facts and then, and then see what I should do. I remember very clearly, you, none of you are probably like this at all, but uh, I was uh, driving down the road with uh, one of our children in the front seat. You shouldn't have been in the front seat. And uh, the person in front of me did a jam down their brakes so that I came so close to crashing into them. And my first thought wasn't that I was following too close. I got out of the car, went down to the to their front of their car, yelled at them, how can you drive like that? And I used some expletives that I wouldn't use today. I reacted rather than thinking about the fact that that guy in front of me was bigger than me <laughs> and was carrying a revolver. <laughs> and sometimes it's better just get the facts first and listen before you act. Dick has shared some basic facts from Father Ben's perspective. That's all we know. Uh, we had felt like when he came that this would have been a, a perfect fit. But here's the thing. The Lord loves Advent. And it's lampstand. The lampstand represents the church, the gospel in the church. Much more than Father Ben or even much more than me. It's his church. It's not the church of the Episcopal church. It's not Dick and Ray's church. It's the Lord's church. And, and to me, that's a very important thing to grasp. And when we uh, face something like this, we look to the Lord of the church and ask, him, Lord, what's the next step? In uh, the book of Chronicles, First Chronicles 12.32, as David's people are getting ready for war, it says, from the tribe of Asher, there were 200 leaders of the tribes with their relatives. All these men understood the sign of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. That's a part of what we need in leadership at Advent. We need the core people to go to God and, and look for the signs. God, what are you saying? If this is a battle like it was for the men of Issachar and the army of David. How do we proceed in going forward? Then back to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 15. And Daniel asked Ariok, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Ariok told him what had happened. Daniel, before he responded, before he reacted, like me, he listened and got the facts. In uh, Proverbs 23, 23, it says, get the facts at any price. Understand what's in front of you. And then that leads to the third step. First, don't panic and don't fear. Second, listen first and discover all the facts and improve them. Take time to pray and thank the Lord. And to me, that's really, really where I want to land. In a major challenge, the first temptation is to be impulsive. Not to say, okay, God, you were aware of this. You're Lord of all, so you're Lord of this. If you're in a car accident, as I have been, when you get out of that car, 
you're often not thinking rationally, but you're, you're thinking, what do I do now? How do I respond? How do I react against that other driver? It's more important to, to make the right decision than to make a fast decision. And that's a part of what I'm saying to you that the future is not yet written for Advent. The best decision right now isn't to react, but to trust God, to step back and talk to God about what does this mean for us, God? What's the future that you have for Advent? In verse 16 of, of Daniel 2, so Daniel went and requested of the king that he would give him grace period so that he might declare the interpretation to the king. What I'm saying, this is a grace period for Advent when we take time to pray to the Lord and to thank him for who he is and what he has done. But it's also a time not, not to procrastinate. It's not a time to say, we'll leave it to somebody else. It's our call, our responsibility to see this as a grace period, a time of prayer. And in addition to prayer, ask for prayer support from your friends. The first thing that uh, Christina, Chris, and I did when she got a cancer diagnosis was the three of us prayed, and then we called in the troops. In my monthly newsletter to my supporters, I asked for prayer. To the church where they attend, they asked for prayer. There was a healing service that, that we went to for Christina. And uh, as a result of that, the tumor that she had actually shrunk. And initially there was a, a diagnosis that was in the lymph nodes as well. But when she went to the hospital right before the surgery, they diagnosed her, there wasn't anything. So we say that, that God's grace touched her as we waited and prayed. Then in, in verses 17 and 18, then Daniel went home and told his three friends what had happened. Pray that the God who rules from heaven will be merciful and explain this mystery so that we and the other advisors won't be put to death. Prayer helps us stop looking at the impossible and look to the God who, uh, who never changes. You know, last summer, I believe it was in about July, we began our prayer and fasting initiative every week. And uh, we were praying for our government. We were praying for spiritual renewal. That needs to continue that we go to God and say, we need to lift up Advent and ask the Lord, God, what is the next step for the ministry? Verse 19, during the night, God revealed and explained the mystery of the dream to Daniel in a vision. And then the captain rushed him to the king, who he then heard with joy the meaning of his dream. Part of what I'd like you to think about is that expect that the Lord not only hears, but he answers your prayer. That when we corporately and individually come to the Lord, he's going to hear our prayer and respond. In the, the day of Daniel, there was a prophet, there were several prophets back in Israel. One of them was Jeremiah, and he wrote letters to the people in Babylon. Daniel read those letters. And in chapter 33, in verse 3 of Jeremiah, it says this, Call to me and I'll answer you. I'll show you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own. We need God to speak to us like that, to show us things that we don't understand. So as we close, verses 27 through 30, no wise man or psychic or fortune teller or astrologer can explain the mystery of your dream, but there's a God in heaven. There's a God in heaven over Advent. In the book of Revelation, John sees the Lord of the church. He has uh, seven stars in his hand, and he walks among seven lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the lampstands represent the seven churches. And here's my conclusion, what that means for Advent today, that you are one of the lampstands where the gospel is shared that Jesus walks among. And there are angels that are assigned to oversee and protect your ministry. This is not simply your battle, but you are participating in a battle to preserve and keep the gospel in this place. And so I encourage you to pray that way. And uh, as I close and before we go to the creed, 
I'd like just to take a moment and, and pray what I suggested. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray your blessing on the ministry of Advent Episcopal Church, that you would guard and keep what you have established here, that you would guard and keep your lampstand, and that the holy angels would guard and protect the ministry of this wonderful place and the people who gather here on a regular basis. I pray the blessing and protection of heaven upon the ministry of Advent. And I ask that in the invincible name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now let's log in and see what God does in the next days and weeks. Let's share together the Nicene Creed. Why don't you stand with me? We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in us. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally God from God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being of the Father, who him in all things are made, for us and for our salvation, who came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified with the conscious pilot, he suffered death from the spirit. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Father, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken in the prophets. We believe in one Holy Catholic and the We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world's life. Please join me in prayers of the people starting on page seven. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Archbishop Welby, our presenting oh. Bishop Curry, our own bishops, Hollingsworth and Love, for all bishops and other ministers, for the Holy Church of God, for Pastor Pitt, for Pastor Paul and Dar, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease. Lord, we pray especially now that our divisions in this country cease. Polarization stops. You have the power to do it. Help us to humble ourselves obediently and listen to you. Help others listen to you and seek unity and peace. We pray that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the mission of the church. We pray for the mission of Advent. Lord, during these times, we don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you. This battle is not ours, it's yours. The battle is the Lord's. Let's remember that, let's trust him, let's keep our eyes on him. We pray that we may be a faithful witness and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Use us as individuals and as members of Advent to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples in this country and around the world. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that we may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. We pray for prisoners, refugees, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. And we lift up especially those, Lord, on our Advent prayer list. We lift in prayer Ed and Lillian Quasi, Mary Lou Dixon, Bob Allen, Barb Frank, Michael Burich, Bill and Judy Arkley, Lucille Benedict, John and Ann Crockle, Liz Urbis having surgery tomorrow, Marilyn Decker, Karen and Lois Zola, Jim Edwards, Sharon Rice, Steve and Sue Boyce, Dave Lufthack, Richard Ward Jr., Joan Joy, Stacy Smith, Sherry Moore, Art Beal, George Golinski, Roger Lufthack, Bev Cummings, Jerry Nagy, Tony Kula, Father Lux, Betty Clark, Ken and Jim, the Eliza James residence, Liz Schilling, Tina and Stella, the residents of Pinzone Tower, Will Hayes, Gabe, Marie Archer, Christina Larson, we pray for help and protection for David Arkley and Rachel Mott. Lord, hear us when we pray. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for this congregation, for those who are present and those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. Lord, we especially lift up now Advent as we open the door to a new season in our life. When Paul has prayed this morning, our eyes are on you, Lord. We believe that you have a role for us to play at Advent Municipal Church. We don't know what that role is. We trust you. We obediently wait for you to reveal to us our next steps. We pray to you, Lord. Lord. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, for those suffering from COVID, those supporting and ministering and being service providers to those with COVID, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For all who have died in the community of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief. But like eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. Let's read together this prayer and let's think anew and think and pray intently about what this prayer means for us in light of Father Ben's decision 
in the decisions facing us going forward. Our Father in heaven, we pray with open hearts and minds to know your will for us. Reveal to us the initiatives we should take for nourishing ourselves with your word, for supporting each other in Christian fellowship, for taking the gospel to outside communities, and for loving and serving others in the power of the Spirit. We are grateful for the pastoral encouragement you have provided us in this season. We are grateful for our leadership for their shoulder with extra burden. Lord, we ask that you lay bare the hearts of this congregation and open each one of us to every new day. Open us to what you have for our future as we leave your children in trust. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also, let's take a moment and share that in the sanctuary and at home. Peace, peace. So it's indeed joyous to be back together. Amen. It's uh, wonderful to see faces out there as opposed to blank space. It's wonderful to see people other than him. <laughs> no, seriously, um, there's a certain, I say this as a, as a male, there's a certain fraternity that we've developed here with Paul and Ray and Dar uh, during our Zoom services. And we're happy to have that fraternity broken or added to with others. I advocated that we get tattoos, but didn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't have a place of home if I got that. <laughs> so first of all, believe it or not, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And the Sunday after that is Easter Sunday. Easter. So we will, we will be resuming our normal services of Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday, uh, nine o'clock. Um, we will also have uh, Maundy Thursday and Stations of the Cross Good Friday uh, as normal. We'll have to change the, the Stations of the Cross a bit because we've got some paraphernalia in the uh, aisles that make it difficult to move around, but we'll sort that out. Um, so please join us for Palm Sunday. Join us for Monday, Thursday. Join us for Good Friday. Join us for Easter Sunday. Let's come back together as a family in Christ. In the bulletins this morning are forms for uh, flowers. Um, today is the last day. Joanne needs to order them so that they're here for uh, Easter. So uh, please take a couple extra minutes if you would like uh, flowers to either uh, give a thank offering uh, for, for blessings that you've received, or if you'd like uh, to give flowers uh, uh, as a memorial, uh, please do so. Uh, but we ask that you turn in uh, uh, $10 per, per flower. Uh, remember, when Easter is over, you can take those flowers home and um, either plant them in the garden if you've got the hyacinths or uh, cut flowers, you can put them in your home. So these are not just a beautiful advent, but they're also good for you. Also, I want to remind people that we have um, an updated directory. Uh, Pete has it back at the table at the um, um, entrance and exit to the church. So if you'd like an updated directory, please get a copy there. I think uh, Joanne may have already emailed uh, them as well, but. Uh, uh, there's a paper copy if you'd like to use them. Finally, as, uh, as you may be now tired of hearing me say, uh, during this time of COVID and shutdown, uh, it's really important for us to maintain ties with our family members. So you can see who's here today. I ask that when you go home, you take the directory and pick somebody that you didn't see here today and give them a call, check in and see how they're doing. 
Uh, ask them if there are things that they, you can pray uh, for for them. Uh, it's really important for us to maintain uh, a sense of community. Um, I can't tell you how many times um, people have said to me how isolated, how lonely, how disconnected they felt. Uh, and so that's why we're so joyous that we're back together uh, for these in person worship services. So, God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, keep coming. Peace be with you. Just before we present the offerings and get ready for the Lord's Supper, we go at home. I'm going to go off camera for a moment and try to share with the people how we're going to do the Lord's Supper. When you come up, like you come up to the, the center aisle, but because of wiring on the sides, we ask them to come up stage left. And then after you receive the bread, then go back down stage right. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can go down this side over here, but there's some wiring that you need to be very cautious of. So we want, want you to be comfortable. We'll also notice a stool here. That is not in case I get tired. That's to protect the camera that's here. So let's continue and bring the offering forward. Please join with me in the doxology. Praise God, God from whom all blessings flow. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Praise the Lord, the Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere. Give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. O holy, O holy, O holy Lord. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to the God and Father of all. Our Lord stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after he took the thanks, he took it into his hands the cup, and he gave it to them and said, Take and drink of this cup, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ is not Christ is Christ We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of the new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we must not be but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. These gifts of God are the people of God. I invite you to come in faith and receive.
face to face sharing and, and you just you can't you can't get that on Zoom. It's wonderful to share online and I believe it's a big part of the future. But the fellowship happens in the sanctuary. Please join with me in the post communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the lightness and singleness of heart. In Christ our Lord. Now, the peace of Jesus surpasses all human understanding. Guard and keep you this week in his name. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Thank you to God.